G'day Bomber fans, uh, obviously as we know the trade period's done, it wrapped up on Wednesday, I thought I'd give us a few days to try and get the right vibe of what we did before I posted a trade period review, so today I'm going to talk about our trade period, what we did, what we didn't do, give us a grade, a bit to get through today, uh, but make sure you subscribe to the channel because the next month it will be draft month, so I'll be posting quite a bit as we look forward to that, uh, but let's get into this one. Okay, so expectations going into the trade period, it was always going to be quiet for the Bombers, the only way we would bring in real ready-made talent was through the free agency period because we did not have the draft capital to both uh, complete high-profile trades and keep active for that CACO bid and the open draft. We were initially interested in guys like Ben Ainsworth and Cam Zerha. They were free agents, but they re-signed with their clubs during the year, leaving guys like Josh Battle and Harry Perryman available, but they were gathering incredibly large contracts uh, for the type of player they are. Battle's on 800 to 850,000 a year, apparently, which is it averages out to be almost the same as Ben Mackay, who was a restricted free agent with many clubs chasing him. And that uh, Harry Perryman bidding war could even mean he's on more money than that. So the club didn't really have a go at any available free agents, meaning we weren't able to bring in proper talent for next year. Instead, it's a future outlook for the club. And I think this was pretty evident by how unwilling we were to splash cash. Uh, this trade period was always going to be a quieter one than usual. Even the players we were like linked to, guys like Connor Stone and Finn McGuinness, trades for them would have been pretty low-key in the grand scheme of things. We weren't linked with any big fish going in. We, we really just had two plans in mind, improve our draft hand uh, and offload players. So let's have a look at the business that we did. All right, well, on Monday of week two of the trade period, we completed our first trade. Uh, there was a bit of uncertainty about pick nine and whether or not we would be able to use it on draft night. There was a chance that it could get eaten up in a caco bid if a team acted early. This uncertainty forced us to act and trade away pick nine to get capital for a caco bid and improve our draft hand next year. We swapped our current uh, first round pick, 9, uh, for Melbourne's future pick, which will be decided where they finish on the ladder. And we also managed to get a whole suite of picks uh, down the line as well that can be used on Kako and in the open draft too. Many were frustrated that we traded pick 9. Many wanted us to bring it to the draft and trade live on the night if a, a bid to, it was to come on Kako before. If we were to do that, we would have got significantly less out of this deal than we just did. We acted early and traded pick 9 while we had the power in the deal, and it meant that we were able to improve our later draft and get more in return, but also give us a chance to use next year's picks to trade into the draft this year, or for next year's trade period, or we keep it for next year's draft. What we did here, which I like, was give ourselves more options than we could have possibly had if we brought pick 9 to the draft. Even if Kako is bidded on at 14 or 15, I'm going to be happy with this trade because it's a allowed us to be more flexible across uh, not one but two draft and trade periods. I liked this one a lot. The second and final trade was a wild one. It was off again. It was on again. It looked like it was completely dead in the water and then an hour later it was done. It was all over the place. Uh, Jake Stringer's moved to the Giants for pick 53. I mean, on face value, realistically, if you had to pick a winner here, it's not us. The Giants get a guy fresh off 42 goals for a packet of chips. It's good business from them, but I'm, I'm still happy with this trade even though we lost it. We, we definitely lost it, but I'd be more frustrated if Stringer was to have stayed with us next year. He was checked out. We all know this. He didn't want to play with the Bombers. We didn't want him to play with us. Uh, there was no point keeping him. I think this trade just had to happen in my eyes. And unfortunately, we didn't really get a lot back for him. But his value dropped severely after all the off-field stories. There was only really one club actually interested in him, uh, GWS. And they didn't want to give up anything more than pick 53. So we let him go for very, very cheap. We're definitely the loser of this trade. But I'll happily take it. So let's look at what we changed so far this trade period or I guess not so far, but what we changed. Uh, not including delistings and retirements. I'll get to that in a second. Just looking at what we did in the trade period itself. Two deals, not a lot of action, but when you look at what the club was trying to do, bring in draft picks to improve... I think we did that. I think we did that not only for next year with that future first, but we've given ourselves a fantastic chance to trade into this year's draft if we want to. That's the key word, want to. Uh, well, key words, I guess. If a player is sliding, we can act and trade to get them live on the night. If there is no one we're really that massive on, we can just see out the draft with those later selections that are really important anyway. It's a deep draft, this one. Picks in the 30s and 40s could turn out pretty good. We haven't just gone out and done what Carlton did, move up to pick three for that star player. We've just sneakily gone about and 
improved slightly, but enough to be excited about. I think what needs to be noted is the fact that we had such a poor draft hand to start. Uh, two picks, 9 and 31. We wouldn't have been able to match a bid for Kako with that. Now we can. We can also maybe get that first rounder in if we trade after. And we could also hold on to most of our draft hand for next year at the same time. This trade period will be defined by the draft a bit and what we do there. So it's hard to know exactly how good this offseason is until then. So I'll keep that in mind when giving us a grade. Look, I think I'm going to give us a C. I I'm pretty happy with what we did. I think we did what we needed to do. So we get that pass mark. I don't really understand all the talk about how poor it was because of inactivity. For years, we've won the trade period and lost when it matters. We now actually have a plan in mind under Rosa. And this is the start of that plan. Seeing how good the youth is on our list currently by allowing them to play more, unlike last year. And we've made that plan possible this trade period with the business we've done. Uh, we definitely could have done more. Uh, you'd get an A grade if you're Adelaide or Collingwood. We only managed two deals. And ideally, uh, a guy like Sheil or Laverde was offloaded as well. But the deals we did, I think, needed to be done. So we get a pass mark. Give me your grade of the trade period down below. I'm sure uh, some will have differing opinions. I've seen quite a few happy already, which I get, and I've seen others pretty damn mad as well. So I think I'm more in the middle somewhere. I'm happy with what we've done, but compared to other teams, I can't give it much more than a C. We just went out and did what we needed to do, which is a pass mark for me. So what have we done overall with our list? So just to look at the uh, list changes for the year, not just from the trade period, but we've lost eight players and currently brought none in, obviously because we haven't uh, traded in any players. Heppel and Kelly retired. Jake Stringer was traded. Baldwin, Hind, Hunter and Wanganine and Weedman uh, recently were all delisted. That is eight list changes, meaning we have to replace those eight players most of which will be from the draft and rookie draft. There'll be one or two additions through the delisted free agency period, possibly. I'll talk about that shortly, but already this shows the club trying to get rid of older players and bring in newer ones. Uh, Heppel, Hind and Stringer are all over 30 and they're gone, replaced by kids most likely. Uh, Wiedemann and Kelly are all over, well over 25. The average age of our departures is almost 27 and I'm assuming that the average age of the players that we bring in uh, this year will be under 20. Without trading away Sheila and Laverde and whatnot, we, we're clearly still making a big difference to our list demographic and I reckon we may go into next year's season with uh, maybe not one of the youngest lists, but definitely per week, one of the youngest teams. Now, the delisted free agency period that I spoke of before, that comes up early November. It starts on the 1st and goes for a week. This is a good chance to pick up some cheap, or not cheap, but free players that were delisted by other clubs. Uh, guys like Tim Membry and Oleg Markov and Joel Hamling. Once in a while, you get really handy players from this, especially in a year where more players are getting delisted to free up list spots for the draft. I will very soon pop out a video or two of the players I would want us to target, uh, but down below, are a few of the high profile free agents not all confirmed yet some are potential options for us if they were to be delisted like Jackson Pryor uh, who we've already been linked with there are quite a few younger options around which is promising especially from big contending clubs I like the idea of getting rejects from big clubs to fill list spots just a trial of sorts and this of course is also something that can be done in the SSP period before next season so keep that in mind as well all right and that is that trade period wrapped up uh, leave your thoughts down below your trade period grade and whatnot like if you enjoyed Subscribe to stay up to date with all the draft and delisted free agency news. Just because the trade period is done, it doesn't mean we're going to be, uh, we're done adding to the list. And as always, go Bombers.